I think you're going to love what you're seeing on screen. This has been inspired by the Dribble website. And what I've got is a carousel. And it's got some static images that don't actually take you anywhere. It's just a carousel. But then did you notice there was a video playing as well? And I've tried to differentiate them, making the images be saturated, but the video is in color and you're going to see it starts to play. It's only a three to four second video. And it's really super lightweight in terms of how big these images and video are. And I'm going to show you how to build this inside Elementor so you can have a bit of a different looking hero banner. Let's get started. It's super simple to build this. And I hope you like the auto scroll that I had on the carousel so it wasn't like the stutter effect. Duh, duh, duh. It was like an auto scroll. Anyway, we've got a header container. We have a hero banner. This is just a container that contains nothing more than a background color. We've got a background overlay image as well, so I can control the opacity of those scissor comb image there. We've got a couple of headings and we got a button over there. So pretty simple, right? But it's what we do down here with the carousel. So if I expand on this, we have a container that I called carousel. And then into there, I've gone and dropped the carousel widget. Now you've got to make sure you are using the nested carousel or the nested widgets to so go to Elementor, go to features make sure the nested element is activated. And of course, make sure you're using flex container because why wouldn't you be using that? Now inside of here, the carousel, we have seven slides. Ignore the order of them, okay? But they are just seven slides. The settings for the container is just set to be a full width, okay? I, I You can do it as a boxed width if you want, but I just went for full width. The carousel, I'm gonna come down to the settings in a moment because that is quite important for the scroll bit. But in terms of the slides, if we go and have a look at them each over here, slide one, it's basically all I've done is zero out the margin and padding. And I did that for every single slide. So everything is zeroed out. And then inside of here, I've just gone and popped in an image uh, and you'll see the image over there. OK, there's the image. Now I'm going to come back onto the images in a moment. I've just popped in an image and then I've gone and given it a clamp for the width and the height. Now it is a square, OK? And I decided that my maximum width was going to be 250 pixel. And when you get to the mobile, it will be 150. So I want it to shrink down. No, it was 250 to 160, sorry. So I want it to shrink down. The reason I did that is so that whether you're on a desktop, laptop, tablet, mobile, whatever, it's going to scale down in size. And a lot of people sometimes forget that you can use a clamp formula inside of your width and your height of your images and your buttons and your padding and your margin and anything you want. So I want to use the clamp calculator and I'll put a link in the video description. I just said that my minimum width will be 380 and my maximum width will be 1400. So when you get to 1400, that image will no longer be bigger than 250 pixel in width and height. And as you scale down, once you hit 380 pixels, which is more than enough for mobiles, it will now go to 160. So it shrinks down, but it never goes smaller than 160. Of the seven slides I have here, six of them are these images with a clamped width and height. Now, if you go to slide number seven, which is actually the second one in the order over here, the container width and height is again using the same clamp formula okay so it's going to scale down so whatever I did for the image I replicated for the container width and the minimum height again open your mind don't just stick it in your font you can use it in many places and the background for this container was the video that you saw earlier so it wasn't an image it was a video and again I'm going to explain the media and the sizes in a moment so this plays on the mobile I did, there's no sound because it's just a background image and all I did was stick in the URL for that video after I've added it to my media library. Now, I'm going to come back onto the settings for the carousel because that's the icing on the cake. Let's just focus on the media library now. So here are my images and there is my video over there. So each one of these images, I basically just got stock images, stuck them into Canva. And at the time, I wasn't sure how big I was going to have them. Was I going to have them more of a portrait style or was I going to go for square? And I was messing around. So my images are 280 by 400 pixel, and that's only 15 kilobytes when you convert it into a WebP, okay? BulkResizePhotos.com, image optimization, plugins and tools. Elemental have a plugin for that as well. 
In hindsight, I could have done this as just a 250 by 250 because these images will never go bigger than that. And, in, and if I was doing this now retrospectively or in hindsight or whatever you want to call it or a paradox, right, if I had a DeLorean, I would do this as 250 by 250. But even still, 280 by 400, it's only 15 kilobytes, okay? And those images are pretty damn small, 13 kilobytes, 17 kilobytes. But now I want to get onto this video. This video is only four seconds, okay? So again, I went and created a canvas in Canva of 280 by 400, and I put in a video, but I shrunk the video down to only be four seconds long. So it just keeps looping, right? Four seconds. And that video was 260 kilobytes. I will put a link in the video description for a free web page where you drop your video in and it kicks out a compressed version. Compressed version went from 260 to 141 kilobytes. Now, some of you are going to say, but 141 kilobytes, that's still a hefty amount. You just think about it for a moment. Do you know how many times I've gone to websites where one hero banner image is like one megabyte? So I've got six images, which are about 15 kilobytes. So do the maths there, plus 141 kilobytes for the video, and it's only four seconds long. The size of that is probably smaller than half the size of some of your hero banner images out there. So in terms of how much heft or bloat you're adding to your hero banner, it is really, really light. Anyway, you drop in your video into your media library and then you get the URL. I didn't do it as a YouTube video or a Vimeo video because I don't want the play button. I don't want any delay. And it's only four seconds long, right? You go and add in a video that's a minute long. Well, on your head, be it. That's now going to be a lot longer. Anyway, back over here. So you got your images, you got your videos in. The, the final few things you need to do is uh, in terms of the style for the carousel, I set the gap to be 30. I could have stuck in a clamp in there, but I just put in 30. Now, the important bit about the auto scroll. So I've said for the desktop, I want to show five. When I get over to the uh, tablet version, it's going to show three. Ignore how this looks at the moment, OK, because it does sort itself out. And when we get to the mobile, I want to show two slides. The video is there. You can't see it because I've clicked on it. It doesn't appear until you actually are viewing it on live or preview. It's a bit annoying, but it is there. So then we'll have two. The other important aspect is that your slides on scroll must be set to one. If you set that to two, three or something else, you, you will get a jump effect, okay, as it moves because it will go like that. So make sure you set it as one. Now comes the really, really important bit. Uh, firstly, pagination. I've taken it off. OK, I don't need to see the dots at the bottom. right. Look, can you see the dots over there? I don't need to see that. Let's get rid of that. The navigation. I don't need to even see the arrows. They're just over there, which you can't see because of the color of it. But again, I don't want the arrows. No navigation, no pagination. Here's the key bit, the settings. Autoplay is set to yes. Scroll speed is set to zero. Normally, this is probably going to be something like 4,000. I think it's 4,000. Go and set that to zero. This is going to auto scroll, but you set that to zero. Pause on hover and interaction. I've disabled that because I don't need you to pause on it. It's just going to auto scroll. Infinite scroll, obviously, yes. The transition duration. If you go to 4,000, Oh, yeah, by the way, it's normally going to look like that from default 500. I've got to set it to three and a half. I have found between 3000 to three and a half thousand is reasonable. You go too small and you will get a, you will get an odd little just movement where it's a bit too slow. You go too quick and then it just basically goes too quick, in my opinion. But anyway, three and a half thousand. Direction is left. You can switch it to right if you want. I'm not going to do any offset slides. You know, that's if you want to have like half a slide. But if you wanted to, you could go and set it on both or left or right. And if you were to go and sick pick it, you could then modify um, the width of it. So is it going to be a very small cut slice away of the slide? Or is it going to be a big slice away? I didn't explain that very well. But, you know, if you want to do offset, then you go to your advanced tab and you go to the custom CSS. And this is all done on the carousel widget. OK, you don't put it on the container or anywhere else. Then you just go and drop in this little bit of code here. Selector dot swipe a wrapper. If you want to give it a class name, get rid of the selector, pop in your dot and your class name. 
transition timing function linear important? I have found you do have to put in the important bit, okay? Sometimes I don't have to, but just stick it in. And then you click update, it adds a little bit something different to your landing page before you scroll down to look at other stuff. And maybe you won't have this near your hero banner. Maybe you're going to have it further down your page. I've done it with images and video. You could have done it with logos. You could have dropped in a lottie. Remember, this is a nested carousel. So you can stick in whatever you want to stick in. If you wanted to put videos in every single one, you're going to add in a bit of a delay and it might be too much movement. And But, but if you're having this nice little auto scroll and a mixture of what we've got here, I think it works really, really well, and it was super simple and easy to do. Hey, I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I'll keep seeing you.